For game developers, our work is precious to us. We spend a lot of blood, sweat and tears working on our dream projects. And the last thing we want to happen is for those projects to be corrupt, overwritten or deleted forever. When first starting out, it's important to know both the how and when to back up your game projects. In this video, I'll be explaining four methods I've used personally to back up my game projects and at the end explain some of the key times I believe you should make backups of your game. Because oh boy, let me tell you, knowing when is just as important as knowing how. And hopefully by sharing that with you, I can save you a lot of time and frustration for future you. But for now, let's just stick to the four main methods. Now mentioning Git first, because this is YouTube and you know, I know your attention span is now waning. And look, if you haven't done Git repos yet or don't know what Gits are, or they're too confusing or scary, please, please for all that is good in this world, give them a shot. Bite the bullet and just get onto Git. I'm saying this now at the start of the video, so most of you can get this message out and understand and tell your friends as well, those who are still just backing up through other methods which I'll share in this video, please learn Git, use Git. I understand for a lot of people, managing a Git can seem quite intimidating at the start, but once set up, it is one of the easiest and safest ways to back up your work. Most game engines have a particular Git or software they like to use, depending on, you know, who owns who but a majority of them come with a free tier software for private projects. I personally use GitHub as my service and GitHub desktop as my application. Um, others may think differently, but for me, it's the easiest one to set up. And others will say that other software is better because of the use cases or it allows for more features. Personally, just having GitHub and GitHub desktop works perfectly well. Might change in future, but for now, as a solo dev by myself, it does the job. Because honestly, there are a few extra cool things a Git repo can do that other backup methods can't that are extra and something that will hopefully persuade you to, uh, you know, jump on board with it. So things such as sharing the project online with others, restricting where and what they can change, adding tasks or feature requests. These are also called pull requests and create separate branches for different versions of the project. So some people might have different platforms that you're publishing on. And so they'll have uh, different, you know, console platforms as branches. Or if you're doing both desktop and mobile, you can have a desktop branch and a mobile branch. So things are a little bit more separated, but you know, you can make changes in desktop, pull it over to mobile and bring code over from each side. I personally also use it for stability branches. So I'll have the main stable branch and then I have the branch that I'm working on, which is usually unstable. Or if there's a particular feature, for example, um, if I have an animator in working in putting animations into Unreal engine, I'll give them their own branch where they can touch and do everything that they need to do, play around with stuff. And then what happens is when you want to merge branches, you basically just will do that as a function called merge branches, where you can compare between two branches, where you want to keep and what you want to overwrite between the two. And once you understand the concepts of how Git works of pulling and pushing things, you can even start contributing to others or making your own projects open source. It just opens a whole new world for you basically is what I'm trying to say. But the most useful thing for me with Git is the fact that it stores all your history. And so in my Git repo history, I can see all my previous work and the changes other people have made, both in comments that you can list as well as the actual code. Like you can see the changes. And if something breaks in the future, then you can quite simply go back and revert to a previous version. I can pull an older version of my game and show you it on a YouTube video because I have a Git and it stores all the history and progress of the game. There's also some other cool things you can do uh, with a Git. So if you're on GitHub, you can create what's called a webhook where all your commits are basically published and you can connect that to a Discord server. You can have an individual channel that will show all the changes and updates you're making to your game. It's just a cool little automatic feature you can implement into your Discord server. So please, if you wanna make games, use Git. Just just use Git. Now, a much quicker and easier method, especially if you don't have good internet connection, is using a USB or hard drive. Preferably if you get yourself a larger one so you can copy over different versions of your game projects. But if you especially don't want to lose this work, then I'll consider buying a new one every three to five years. You know, use the old one for, for something else. Just don't, don't put your your life and soul energy into a little USB that's like 15 years old because it could die at any moment. Look, I just wanted to warn you, you can do what you want, but you should also be aware that these things can just die. And once they're dead, it's extremely hard, if not impossible, to get that data off. 
and it's uh, it's quite heartbreaking actually. I've experienced that in the past as well. Uh, and another thing I should mention, which also relates to the Git repo as well, is that not every folder in your game engine project needs to be copied over. There are temp folders and just folders specific to the engine that are compiled when you launch the project. And if you're running low on space, I would consider just not copying them over. Now, for those of you still watching, who are still too lazy to set up a Git or don't have a USB or hard drive to back up your project onto, there's a third option. Um, and that's using a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive. Uh, it's simple as dragging and dropping your folder into the browser. It's not gonna be as fast as Git, I just might add that. Uh, it will be slower to upload and download and kind of access those files. And it's important to be mindful in the services you're using. I know many of us, lots of cloud storage available to us and it makes a lot of sense just to back things up on there. But it's important to also remember that the terms and conditions that some of these services provide mean they own what you upload. Now, this doesn't mean they're gonna steal your game idea or rip off your assets, you know, hopefully, but there are ways these contracts work that you can never be too careful about. So, you know, just stay safe on the internet. Don't upload things to different providers if you don't trust the provider or you just don't want that to be owned by someone else. You know, the easiest way if you're uncertain is to just not do it. Now, speaking of safety, this brings me to my next and what I think is the coolest method of backing up your game projects, and that's through a local server or NAS. You can pick one up online for a couple of hundred bucks, and not only can you set up your own Git repo from it and store all your files so they're accessible to any device on the network, username and password pending. Most of them come with automatic backup services. So instead of having to manually back up your system, you can just automate it on the NAS server. And putting in a couple of terabytes of storage, which has become cheaper over the past few years, just means you can fire and forget. Now, NASes, you can also do other cool things, um, like set up a Plex server for your media. I'm also working on setting up a DaVinci server as well, so I can do video editing around the house or on the road. And, and you know, we're, just, we're getting really off topic here, so we're going to pull away from the NAS and server discussion, because uh, despite them being really cool, look, I, I just think if you've got the budget and the space for them, you should get one. It'll change your life. It's like going from one monitor to two monitors. You can never go back. You know, I can never not have a NAS server now. It's just something that's going to be in my house forever. And so you better believe if there is a fire or a flood or a war or whatever, I'm just grabbing that NAS and it's coming with me out the door. It is just a really secure, really cool piece of technology that I love having. It just works so seamlessly whether you've got a Windows, a Mac, Linux, it's just like having an extra hard drive in your computer, but it is a network drive. They're amazing, they're powerful, they can do so many other cool things, you know, put it on the bucket list of cool things to have in life. Honestly though, the best backup method is all of them combined. Having your project saved in multiple locations, which means no matter what happens, whether your house burns down, your computer dies, cloud service provider decides just to close down. By having multiple backups in multiple locations separate from each other, you can feel safe and secure knowing that your dream projects I'm not going to get lost. And if anything, in the future, you enjoy stumbling upon that random USB that has your old dream project on it from 10 years ago, and you can plug it in, play it, and just realize and remember how far you've come as a game developer, because that's been a personal experience for me. Now, to finish off, I thought it'd be best to list some of the best times for you to back up your project. Firstly, when you are starting to build your project, once you have a working build that you think is a good starting base for your game, it's something that you'd be terrified in losing, it's time to back it up. If you've just fixed a major bug in your project, back it up and yeah, better do it quickly before another bug appears. Are you about to implement a new game-breaking feature? Uh, we're gonna change a bunch of code or introduce a whole lot of new things you've never done before? Back it up before you break something. Because at least if you make a mistake and you're like, I don't know how to undo this, you've got a backup that you can just revert back to. Perhaps you bought a new asset or you're wanting to add a service from you know, Google, Apple, Steam. Back it up before doing that because things can and will break. Tell me, is the weather looking a little extreme? A power outage is expected? Is it bushfire season? Back up your projects. Stay safe, but times like that, you gotta back up your work. 
perhaps you found someone to collaborate with, whether it's someone at school uh, or you're doing it at a local game jam. Back up your project before anyone new hops on board because then at least if they do something that you didn't like and you said, I told you so, you don't need to start from scratch. You can start from the backup. Are you considering doing a major cleanup of your project? Back it up before that. And when the game engine doesn't let you undo the deletion and that thing's gone forever, you, you really do wish you had done a backup before you went off, you know, combing through and fixing up the project that you just broke permanently. Simply put, my rule of thumb is this. Once you've done some work, ask yourself, do I want to spend more time doing that task again? Most of the time, it'll be, no, I don't want to waste more time doing that thing I just did again. If that is the case, then back it up. And there we have it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, please do hit subscribe. Comment below with any more questions or maybe suggestions for things that you want to see in future videos, things you'd like to learn. Maybe I should just make some series on how to set up Git repos since I'm so passionate about them. Maybe I should do something about NASs because I just love them. Maybe get sponsored by someone. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Anyways, just comment below anything game dev related, whether it's doing devlogs, live streaming, programming, you name it, I'm all about it. And if you're also interested in devlogs, I've got one on my cozy Cafe Dasher game called Coco Loco. Uh, playlist is right there. I do uh, usually monthly devlogs updating you on the progress of it. Um, there's also a Discord for the game. So if you want to reach out to me or get involved in the community, feel free in joining that as well. Anyways, until then, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.